This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and uh, this is your DJ Python Hyena, and I'm joined by... Shiloh Six from Film Fantasy. And we've got a real treat for you this, well, this evening, and... uh, for all you Rocky Horror Picture Show fans, we've got my favorite person in the entire movie on the phone. Please welcome Columbia, a.k.a. Little Nell. Welcome, Little Nell. <coughs> Darling, no one's called me Little Nell for a very, very long time. I've grown at least 30 inches since I last spoke to you, Python. <laughs> Yes, yeah. uh, I was watching the, I'm sorry about that, I had to get my sheet here. Um, I was listening to the commentary on um, Rocky Horror last night, and uh, Patricia Quinn was calling you Little Nelly. <laughs> little Nelly, wow. Yeah. Oh, he, call, I, he calls me Nelly, actually, quite a bit. Mm. I never mind. Just, you know, call me old-fashioned, call me what you will. Well, um... You're, you're from Sydney, Australia, and it's it's like amazing that we're having this. It's interesting how technology is now, you know. Um, you got a lot of interesting oh, animals out there, huh? We certainly do. I'm battling a few of them in the garden right now. <laughs> Who, who's goes the old wombat? <laughs> you got Kookaburra wombats? In the, yeah. Yeah. And I've got, and you know, kookaburras, you usually see them in threes. Isn't that interesting? And I don't mean three separately, like there'll be three, one over there, one there, and one next to the other, you know, like the parents and a child. That's a little interesting observation from down under. Because, you know, the kookaburra is the laughing bird. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> that one. And you've got some of the most deadly snakes on the planet there in Australia, like the taipan. I think that's an interesting animal. I know nothing about snakes. Yeah. They scare the hell out of me. <laughs> Well, the brown snake is the most lethal, very undercover snake. But, of course, the box jellyfish is the one that takes everyone's gateau. The box jellyfish, yes. Stung, yeah, the box jellyfish, once you're stung by that, you've got something like 15 minutes to have your life saved. Well, yeah, I've heard about that, too, uh, the box jellyfish. Yeah. And, and you get the taipan snake and the tiger snake and the fierce yeah. snake, which is the brown and snake. And widow spiders and funnel web spiders that jump out at you. And um, death adder. They dig, a ho- they dig a hole in the ground and then they make, they weave a web into a funnel shape, like basically the finger of a glove, which is inside the, <laughs> inside the hole. And when, when their prey walk past, they sort of lean back and use it as a trampoline and then come flying out and bite you. And what? they can kill they can kill a baby or an old person usually their bite. Oh yeah, how, how do you combat that? How, how, how do you, how you co- combat that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you die, it sounds like. That. And you get the death adder there too, that's another one. Well, mercifully, I haven't had any. I haven't had any snake. I haven't seen a snake in my garden yet. Which I've got quite a big garden, but I haven't had that. But I've got endless other things. Yeah. But um, not necessarily deadly. You got kangaroos, which is your version of our deer, more or less. <laughs> but we don't have them in the city so much. Oh, we not that you have deer so much in the city. Oh, we've got deer in the but, city. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the stupid things don't know how to stay out of communities. They're beautiful deer. Do your do your deer? But being in Canada, where it gets so goddamn cold. Well, I st- do you do you have um, Lyme disease? Um, I don't know about that, but Avril Lavigne uh, most recently contacted it, and she's from <laughs> she's Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bad disease. Yeah. I'm, Very bad. If unless it's diagnosed early. Anyway, we may be boring the uh, the fans rigid with our nature talk, but of course I'm fascinated to hear anything about, you know, your Canadian life. Well, I had to open up with Australia because I am an animal lover, and like I said, um, I do have a big love for Australia myself. You know, which which city are you in? Sydney. Sydney. Oh, you're in Sydney. Okay. You're in Sydney. Yeah, fifteen minutes from the Opera House. Oh wow, I love opera. Yeah, but. But the, 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 the divine thing about where I live is that my view is of just bushland. 
Oh. I climb Ackleby in the middle of the countryside. It's a sort of nature reserve. But I'm I, in 15 minutes, I can be sitting in the opera house. So I'm very blessed with my... And particularly after living in New York for 20 years and London for 14 years, I just adore this kind of country city life I have. I've been to New York before and I absolutely loved it. I've been there quite a few times, actually. But London is one place I've always wanted to go. And, you know, I'm planning on it in in a couple of years. You know, I find the culture out there. It's it's just so unique. You know, it's very conservative. And, you know, a lot of Canada is very conservative as well. But out in London, they're just the same. I think London is conservative. I think I think New York's a lot more conservative. I think the people, I think English people are less conservative than us. So they're certainly Londoners. Well, I'm going to I give mean, you... the New Yorkers are a kind of, are a mix, but you know, in general, I think Americans are far more conservative. Than yeah, I'd agree with that one. It's true. Well, I'm going to give you my backstory on the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You see, I've been reviewing movies since 1996, and that turned out to be the year I first saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I saw it at a, a, a nightclub here that's no longer open, and I had no idea what the movie was about, and I just came because it was some place to go, and and I'd never seen it before, and I, and I remember I had somebody ask me, he goes, what are you dressed up as? And I just kind of joked and said, I'm the unbilled film critic whose scene was cut from the movie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. That sounds like something you do. But I've seen it... I, I, <laughs> I've got it on Blu-ray now, and oh man, I, I love your performance. And it pl- the movie plays every Halloween here at our local playhouse here in Fredericton, and people show up and Great. dress up. Yeah, people love to dress up as uh, Patricia Quinn maid character a lot. But uh, I think, I, I yeah? It, so they like to dress up as oh, in her maid costume, yes, absolutely. But I That's like... This outfit. I like your costume best. In fact, I watched Rocky Horror last night just to prepare for this, and I was wondering, how, how did you go about being casted in this film? Well, first of all, the reason that more people don't dress up as me, I, fu- I found out. I mean, I mean, I get tons of people dressing as me, but I get magenta saying, I wanted to dress as Columbia, but I couldn't afford the outfit. It's uh, So many Columbias make their own outfit, and I am so so impressed they do the most incredible jobs there's a lot of sequin work to do and a lot of you know sewing of ribbon to the shorts and the sequining the tap shoes they're just a fabulous so i just would like to take my hat off to all those gals that are, that um, do go to the effort of dressing as columbia and i love the maid's outfit magenta's outfit as well very you know it's a fabulous look um no we just got oh i got cast because i um was working as a soda jerk in London and Jim Sharman had met me and he, they, he and Richard O'Brien and Richard Hartley came into the, you know, Richard O'Brien wrote it, the show and Richard Hartley was the musical director, Jim Sharman the director. Anyway, they, they came in to audition me. Really. I, did, I was just tap dancing my way to the uh, to their table to make them some um, ice cream sodas and uh, got the part. And then, they, and then Richard decided to put the tap dance in because I was a tap dancer. That was my favorite shot in the movie when you're in the middle of singing Time Warp and it has that wonderful shot where it shows you up on top of the um, the jukebox. And jukebox. they have that... I, I love that shot of you where the camera is looking up at you and you're doing the tap dancing and you're a great tap dancer and then you go over and you do that nice clumsy fall there and then you tap yourself on the top hat and I loved it when you stood up and you kind of put your hands down by your side and you kind of march over back to the uh to where your place is and I love the comedic effect of it and it was my favorite part of the movie I love watching you tap dance Oh, you're adorable, Python. Yes. If someone's scared of snakes, how come you're called Python? I'm not scared of snakes. That's oh, uh, he's not Shiloh. scared of snakes. Yeah, I'm the one who's terrified of snakes. <laughs> Shiloh's. Oh. Uh, Shiloh here is terrified of snakes, and this one here always talks about snakes just, just to scare the hell out of me. Yeah, there's Wait a, a minute, I'm talking to two people. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Python. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm, connection, I'm, I, the connection's not good enough that I can't hear the difference in your voices. How about that? There you ah. go. Oh, right. So it's Python and Shiloh. Shiloh. Yeah, it's, I, I do the show. I've been doing the show here for 10 years, and 
Shiloh also reviews movies, and we just kind of hooked up and are doing our Cisco oh, Labor gotcha, thing on gotcha. you. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, it's a good thing I got that straight. <laughs> I've been reviewing movies since 1997. Yeah, he's a year behind me, but uh, yeah. we both pretty much have the same taste, and we both like the Rocky Horror yeah. Picture Shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the Rocky Horror yeah. Picture Show. Let's see, I'm from a place in Canada here called, uh, well, the province is called Quebec, but the the city is Montreal, and... Every year for the last oh, 35 years plus, uh, they play the Rocky Horror Picture Show every night uh, at the old Aztec Theater in the downtown area of Montreal. And it amazes me, because the film is wonderful, it amazes me that these people still dress up as all the characters and go to the Aztec Theater every night. Because the movie, I think, it costs $2 to get in or something like that. And these people, yeah, fabulous. Yeah, these people have been so loyal to the film. You know, myself, I actually bendered on a whole two weeks watching the movie. You know, I, I've reviewed it quite a few times. But uh, these people dress up as all the characters, and they they go to this theater every night. They pay their two dollars, and they've been they've been doing it for almost forty years now. And it's it's so amazing. Let me yeah. ask you. All right. Why do you think it's what 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 do you think gave the film the legs that? have kept it going for 40 years. Well, I think what's kept it going for all these years is, you know, for one thing, it's it's one of those films that's kind of so out there and it's just so fun to watch. You know, it, it's a musical and everybody loves musicals. At least I do, you know. I, I've always loved musicals. And I think the idea of the film is that it's kind of got a bizarre premise and it's a cult film and it stood the test of time. And, you know, it stood the test of time for a number of reasons. But I, I think the biggest reason is because it's such a wonderful film and because it's so well made and fun to watch. You know, I, I know people here in Canada that watch it every Halloween and is is become very conservative with them uh, for the film. You know, it's one of those films you can go back and watch pretty much any time and you'll still enjoy it. It's one of those films you can't really get yeah. bored with because it's got so many wonderful and well-written characters. It's got some fun musical sequences to it. It's got some fun dance to it. And it's also got a science fiction horror theme to it. So the idea of the film is that it's so bizarre. That's what makes it fun. Yeah. I do think, though, that you've missed a critical element there. And you, you haven't mentioned sex. And I think the sex factor is a key factor. Oh, I, I totally, I totally hetero, agree. Hetero, bisexual... Um, homosexual, the whole, every, you know, transsexual, the whole lot is covered. And I think it's given people that are, you know, inclined in one of those areas mm -hmm. or all of those areas. Mm -hmm. I totally you agree know, with you. It's liberated them. And I think that's a marvelous thing about the film. I, I, to I brought, totally agree. I brought that out into the open and it's made people realize that, you know, don't dream it, be it, and live your life. And, and yeah. mercifully, the world is finally beginning to catch up very slowly with that attitude. Yes, they are. You know, I totally agree with you on that. Um, the idea, you're absolutely right. You know, the idea that the film, anybody can watch it. Um, it's yeah. Also, it, I mean, I tell people that, you know, people say, oh, my, they'll come to conventions and say, oh, I'm not going to let you know, the children watch it till they're, I don't know, 15 or 16. I say, you're out of your mind. Oh, I think that's an appropriate age for the movie. Oh, to me, it's never too young to watch that film because anything you don't understand, like kids love the time. They just love what they love. They don't, you know, they, it, it's not sordid in any way. No, not at all. My my daughter was brought up on it from the, you know, get go, and um, and other people I know, and it's it had no no ill effects whatsoever. They just enjoy the songs and the costumes and the people. The I think characters. that's one of the big elements that stands out after all these years with the film, Python. Well, I was just going to bring up the film also took a pretty big risk, too, because I remember the year before uh, Rocky Horror was released, uh, Brian De Palma did The Phantom of the Paradise, which uh, had a kind of a similar uh, form to it. And it didn't do quite as well, though it picked up a cult following. And uh, um, I think that um, R Rocky Horror took a, a risk and it paid off for it and paid off beautifully. Yeah. And plus, I love your costume. <laughs> Well, you have to remember that it was a, you know, it was a musical on the stage first, which and it was a huge hit yes. in that capacity. So it wasn't uh, a, you know, it didn't begin as a film. It had a, an enormously successful theatre life before the film. And as you know, when it, when the film came out, the film bombed. 
Yeah, I originally. That, yeah. Now, how long did it take you to get done up in your makeup for the film? Oh, I can't remember, but not but not long by film standards, really. Yeah. Um, the hair was the hair was pretty easy. Probably only took me about I don't know an hour. I love the red hair. <laughs> <laughs> Still got the red hair, but I have a bob now. Oh, fantastic! There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, if you, all you Canadian listeners, you can check me out on Instagram and see my fabulous life down under. Oh, I'd love to take a and look my, at that. My bob hasn't changed. And then when I go to it's it's little, oh, no, what is it? It's um, little Nell Campbell is my Instagram account. But, um, yeah, and when I do, if I go to conventions, I take photos of the fans and tattoos and whatever. It's, it'll hopefully entertain you. Oh, I'm a big tattoo person. I've got my arms done. So, um, oh, well, you, you, as you know, those conventions, you see yeah. unbelievable tattoos at oh, the yeah. horror conventions. Do you, do you think uh, little, um, that uh, the Columbia character is a little reference to Harley Quinn? To who? Harley Quinn, the uh, Joker's girlfriend in the Batman comics. No, I don't think so. I, mean, I don't know that character, um, not being a you know, Batman follower. But uh, Richard would have told me if that was the case. He just invented those characters himself. Well, you had some interesting co-stars in the movie, like um, Susan Sarandon, now an Oscar winner, and it's kind of funny seeing her in that movie <laughs> all those years ago. Um, She's so good in the film. Yeah, and I, I felt bad to her, hear that uh, Tim Curry doesn't like talking about the film. Um, I don't know whether he's like that now, but I heard that recently. Yeah, I don't think he's... Well, I don't really know if he's like that anymore. I think there was a time when he felt a bit typecast because of it. Yeah, I kind of got um, that feeling, you know. He he felt like, you know, that was the one thing he was good at at the time, and everybody kept stinging him with that. But, you know, he's a great actor. Yeah, but I think that he's done a lot of other things now and been... um, appreciated for that too so he's not just thought of as that but you know the fact is that we should be so lucky that people enjoy the rocky horror show so much and and i never mind being associated with it i've done lots of other things and um not necessarily all in show business but if people enjoy the film i'm just thrilled to hear that well, I do have a question. You know, one I, I I was born in the '80s, so you know, one of my favorite musicians that I did grow up to live with was the Mighty Meatloaf. He is in the movie. What was it like working with him? Oh, he was just adorable. He, I mean, he hadn't made his um his famous album at that point. You know, his career was had not taken off, and so it was pre famous Meatloaf. But he was the most adorable person. Very easygoing, a lot of fun. Couldn't have been easier to work with, and we all were mad about him. And then I'm so thrilled that he went off to make, you know, Bat Out of Hell and become a megastar. Did you see him in Fight Club? Pardon? Uh, did you, did you no, see, him in... see him in Fight Club? No, I didn't. You're, you're, you're not missing much. Oh, great movie. <laughs> no, it wasn't. We're on opposite oh, ends for that one. I, I, I don't like any kind of fighting. Oh, they, they <laughs> wasted him in the movie. I didn't like his. Yeah. I didn't like his character in the movie. I, you know, I I thought they wasted him in it. But you know, Bad Out of Hell is probably is one of the greatest records for that type of music ever yeah. released. Oh, it's amazing. I think it's, I think it's up there. It, it is. Isn't it one of the best selling records? Oh yeah, it is. And then you know he. I think it's, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. Go on. Oh, I was I was just going to say I think it's uh what it is one of the best selling records. And it's the same thing. It's, it showed he showed his talent so early. Bad Out of Hell too was just as good, if not better. That's incredible. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I have to say, I think he added a great comedic element to Fight Club, though, especially opposite Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. And it was interesting seeing him in that, and then looking back and seeing him Rocky Horror, especially when they sing the Eddie's Teddy song. <laughs> <laughs> you went nuts over that teddy bear, didn't you? <laughs> oh, um, you mean in the film? Yeah, in the film, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, no, no. In the film, my character is very, very keen on Eddie. Very yeah. upset when he he's killed. Yeah, and I'm more upset when we're sudden when I realise we're being we're eating Eddie. Oh yeah, yeah. That made me cry when I saw Meatloaf get killed. Yeah, that was the last straw. Yes. Yeah. Although, quite frankly, there towards the end of the film, you 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 kind of um, took one for. Uh, for Frankenfurter there, and your very last shot. I suppose you could yeah. interpret it like that, yeah. Now, Richard O'Brien and uh, Patricia Quinn, uh, like I said, they do the commentary track on the Blu-ray, and they seem to have a really good working chemistry together, don't they? Yes, they do. Um, they do. What were they like They're to work with? They're very amusing. Yeah? Yeah. What were they like to work Actually, with? Everyone involved in that film was amusing. Yeah, Time Warp plays at every Halloween party. Yeah. And, and of course, Richard O'Brien has that distinctive voice, you know. <laughs> well, it illustrates my point earlier. As I said, the film stands the test of time because there's so many great elements to the film. As she pointed out, you know, the, the gender bending. But there's so many great elements to the film that have stood the test of time. That's why people still love this movie, you know. It's got yeah. cult status for a reason. Well, also the uh, the songs are so good. That's a main part too. I'm I've been actually a bass player for 19 years, and I every Halloween I still play science fiction double feature. It's one of my all time favorite songs. That opening sequence with the lips, it gets me every oh, time. It's fabulous, it's fabulous isn't it? opening. I agree. Fabulous, it's a wonderful song. And they're Patricia Quinn's um, lips too, as she said in the commentary track. Yeah, that's her lips. Yeah. <laughs> she was com- complimenting. Yeah. She was complimenting her dentist on how white her teeth was. <laughs> oh, I was just thinking that in my head. Actually, those are some pearly white teeth. And then you turned around and said it. You took it right out of my head. Yeah. No, I remember that they took. She had to afterwards finish making the film. They asked her to go back and to film the um, miming to Richard singing. And I, in, in the original play, she sang that song. Yes, yeah. And she was just telling me recently that she nearly, she originally turned the movie down when she found she wasn't going to be singing that song. Oh, who said, it was the Gimme Gimme's that are the ones that sang it, I do believe. Pardon? I, I do believe it's the Gimme Gimme's that sang that song. What do you mean the Gimme Gimme? The, they're the na- it's the name of the band that sang uh, Science Fiction Double Feature, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you mean in the <laughs> the musicians that we use? Yes. Oh, I don't know the name. I didn't. I thought they were session musicians that we used. Oh. But no. But Richard O'Brien. Well, I don't know. But Richard O'Brien, you know, sa- saying science fiction. But in the in the play pr- version, yes, the stage version, Pat sang that song. And when she was told that they wanted her to be in the film, but she was no longer going to be singing, that was her one solo song. Oh, I they see. Said, well, we, we want you in the film, but we, you're not going to be singing. your <laughs> you've lost your solo song. Oh wow! She said, "She she said, I'm, I'm not going to do the film then." And then um, they took her to lunch when they told her all this, and they said, "Well, why don't you just swing by the producers now on the way home? And we'll show you the set for the film." <laughs> and they showed her the set, and she looked took one look at the set, and she said, "Oh yeah, I'm going to be in that film." <laughs> nice. I loved it during Time Warp. She has that nice hissing sound mm. that she gives uh, um, at the end of her lyrics and stuff. She was great at that. Yeah, she's she's a, she's terrific in the film. Now, and was, absolutely gorgeous looking, too. What was your favorite song in the film? Um, I think science fiction might be my favorite song too. It's everybody's oh, favorite lovely. song. The song, it's so beautifully written and ominous. You know, you get the opening yeah. of the picture, it's a black street, and then you see the lips coming forward, and then you hear boom, boom, piano and bass, and it's so eerie and ominous. And then you see the lips, and right there, you know you're in for something good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and then you got. Um, no, it's a treat. <laughs> Susan, yeah. Susan Sarandon singing. Now, t- gentlemen, t- I'm going to have to go soon. Okay, sure. Yeah. But um, so, do you have any uh, any other questions you'd like for me before I I need to leave? Okay. Okay, I got a couple. Um, you were in Pink Floyd, The Wall. Oh, for about two seconds. Where was you in that film? 
Well, I, I haven't seen it for so long, but I think I'm in it for about two seconds, so it's very easy not to see me. Okay. Well, I think one uh, thing I wanted to bring up, did you ever hear this film called The Room? Oh, man. The Drum? The Room, R-O-O-M. No. The reason I bring it up, it's said to be the greatest bad film ever made. And uh, right. appar- yeah, apparently it's got the same kind of phenomenon going for it as the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but totally by accident. And you got well, these things happen. And the, of course, the Big Lebowski has done it as well, where people show up well, and start dressing up. Mercifully, our film has kept its kept its relevance by just being a marvelous film. Oh, absolutely! I totally agree. Full of great songs. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about the the fact that the films endured this long? Is it overwhelming for you? Oh, heavens no. No? Oh, no. No, I just think it's great. It, it, it's something that's hard to predict. I hear about filmmakers, especially like um, early on in their careers, like they they get their first big hit and it's like, it's over. they're surprised and, you know, and then the film takes off and it becomes a big thing. Yeah. No, you, ne- you never know. You can't predict a hit and you certainly can't predict a cult hit. No. 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 Well, um, so, so, gentlemen, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure talking to you in gorgeous Brunswick, Canada, from yes. my beautiful Sydney, Australia. Well, thank you very much. Oh, well, we were, we're and, so honoured to and, talk and, to you. Oh, it's a pleasure. And have a great evening and, uh, and enjoy Halloween and this, the, the rest of this 40. There'll be a, there's an, a 40th celebration in New York of the show. In what? September, I think the nineteenth. And uh, anyway, I'll look forward to tracking you down via the net. Oh, it was a pleasure to speak to you tonight. Thank you very much well, for coming you. on one, here. One, one more question. One more question. Would you do yeah. a plug for CHSR for us in Python's of Paradise? Course. Just say your your little little Nell or Nell. Introduce yourself and say you're listening to CHSR in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Sorry, it's C S C what? Sorry, C H S R. C H S R. Okay, yeah, ready? Fred, in New yep. Brunswick. We're ready. Hi there, it's Nell Campbell here, aka Little Nell from the Rocky Horror Show, and I'm listening to C S H R in fabulous Brunswick, Canada. Tune on in, and don't dream it, be it. That was Thanks. fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. We Hello, love you, guys. little Nell. I'm Thanks actually going to go listen to science evening. fiction tonight. We love you, Fabulous. Nell. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful morning.